Well, mostly because Uncle Phil of Uncle Phil's Cellar told me not to do it. For the first time since 1979, I am going to attempt to chew tobacco. Now, if you've been a viewer of my channel for any amount of time, you will know that I think that dip and uh, chewing tobacco just in general are kind of disgusting. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to get nauseated from this. Wow, that, that smells really nice. It smells like uh, kind of cheap pipe tobacco. Now, this is Stoker's Classic. And Stoker's, I was told by Mississippi Reb, thank you, Mississippi Reb, that this is not whole leaf chewing tobacco, and I can see that it's not. There's a lot of stringy stuff in here. I understand that this package claims that this contains at least 19% domestic tobacco, but God knows what the rest of it is. It could be somebody's yard leaf rakings, I don't know. Guys... If I puke on camera, I apologize in advance. Here's my wad. Look at my wad! I'm scared, Mom! All right, well, we'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Tasty. It actually is tasty. Now, I don't have a mud jug, so I'm spitting in this dirty coffee cup. I hope I don't accidentally swallow it, because it's very tempting. Nasty shit. I mean, as far as the spitting goes. Um, the flavor is molasses. And I get the raisin that people talk about. Yeah, with this kind of chewing tobacco, I don't think you could actually chew it. Uncle Phil, this one's for you, buddy. Chaw. I've been watching a bunch of reviews on this. Uh, suit and Tie Dip Guy did one, Smokeless Choice. Uh, no, not Smokeless Choice, I'm sorry, Angry Buddha. God, this stuff makes my mouth really juicy. I, I can't argue the flavor is really nice. And I'm already starting to get some nicotine off this. I feel like Buford Pusser, uh, Buford P T. Pusser on, uh, what was that, Smokey and the Bandit? Where he had the golf ball size of chaw in his mouth. I'll guarantee you that Jackie Gleason did not have a golf ball size wad of chew in his jaw. I bet that was a special effect. Yeah, the tobacco flavor is strong. How the hell can anybody talk with this shit in their mouth? Maybe that's where the southern accent comes from. If I talk, let me talk like the dude down in Texas. Let's see if that, yeah, actually that helps. I can actually talk better with a Texas accent. It's too bad I don't have some gut bucket country to play here. Um, you know, um... Or something, you know. Cause now there's cum stains on the pillow where your sweet head used to be. Something like that, you know. <laughs> God damn, it's, it's, it's actually kind of burning my mouth from the nicotine or the acidity of the tobacco. It is tasty. Work it around in there a little bit. But I have to spit like every 10 seconds, and I know most guys that chew don't have to do that, right? What am I doing wrong, guys? Maybe I'm just juicy by nature. That's it. I'm juicy by nature. Yep. I need to hear some, some George Jones or something. Yeah, I got, instead of uh, messing up one of my nice nasal snuff hankies, I'm going to just spit in this paper towel. 
Because when I get ready to get rid of this shit, I'm going to probably want to wrap it up in something. But now I understand the need for the mud jug. God damn, Bubba. This is the shit. No, it, it, truthfully, it's it's real. It's really tasty. It's really delicious. I don't think I could do this every day. Um, now, Stoker's and the Stoker's brand, I understand from my friend Mississippi Reb, is uh, it's a budget-priced chew. The only other chew that I've ever had was that one block of Red Man that I bought back in 1979 for next to nothing. And that was the story about the beautiful young lady that came into my uh, radio station studio at 1030 at night. Uh, to uh, Carolina 64, or Carolyn, excuse me, 6040. I doubt very much she was there for any other reason than to meet the radio announcer. Um, if she'd been there to do business with the station, she probably would have come during regular business hours, not at uh, 10.30 on a Friday night. Um, and in the little town where I lived, women just didn't dress like that. I mean, this is Iowa, you know, north central Iowa. Farm girls, I mean, they can look real nice, but they're not going to be dressed up like they're going to take a, a stroll down Fifth Avenue. If she was looking for directions, the police department is immediately across the street from where the radio station was. And she had to go into a dark hallway and climb a flight of stairs in order to get to the studio where I was sitting. She also didn't knock. She just kind of walked in with a big grin on her face. So maybe she was looking for a love connection. But I'm sorry, my response or my reply to your comment uh, Carolyn uh, 6040 was obscene, and I apologize for that, although I, I assure you it's not an exaggeration. When I was down in, uh, God, I'd worked there less than a month, and we had an early November snowstorm, and I was walking from my apartment to the radio station, which was less than a four-block walk, and I hit a patch of black ice on the street, and my feet exchanged places with my neck, and I broke my back. I didn't, you know, break it, break it, like I could still move. It hurt like hell. And I went into the station, and my boss saw how much pain I was in, and that I was in a cold sweat and all pale, and asked me what happened. Well, they took me to the hospital, and back in those days, they put you in traction. So I had to lie in a bed in the Ellsworth Community Hospital in Iowa Falls, Iowa, for um, I think it was eight days that I was in the hospital in traction. And I got girls who were looking for a boyfriend because I was the, the recognized voice on the radio. And also, if I do say so myself, although I was heavier, probably better looking at age 20 than I am now. Uh, but at any rate, oh, I just swallowed some. Oh, God. Well, anyway, um, so, you know, I, I do know that there are some girls that are sort of uh, media groupies, some women who are media groupies, so maybe, you know. I mean, I, I can't think of any other reason, Carolyn 6040, that she would have been up there. She certainly didn't like me chewing the big water red man I had in my mouth. But I haven't chewed tobacco since that. Uh-oh, there was a little fleck. Yeah, you're right, Angry Booty. You can't really chew this. Also, Mississippi Reb said that. Ain't this attractive? See, this, I don't know which is worse. Spitting lip diarrhea, which I'm doing now, or sticking powdered tobacco up my nose. I mean, either way, it's kind of antisocial in the some circles. I wonder what will happen if I do a nice pinch of snuff along with this. Maybe I'll spin out. This could be really neat. Oh, good. The Black Arabica. Whoops. From Samuel Goweth. That'll go good with this raisiny 
molasses -y, tobacco -y mess in my mouth. Pinch Witch of Squiddy, up yours. Oh, now that's a combination that'll give you a coronary. But it's a really good blend of aromas, man. Now, of course, I understand that once I finish with this chaw, I'm going to have to go and brush my teeth right away. There's a lot of sugar in this. I mean, a lot. Um, this is a snack as much as it is. God damn it. Tobacco. I am foaming at the mouth of this crap. Well, anyway, I'd like to send a big thank you out to my buddy Lee down in Horton, Texas, who sent me this. Uh, Lee, you're my hero uh, for bringing me back to a horrible habit that I haven't done in nearly 41 years. So thank you for that. Uh, yes, sir. So here I am, your Uncle Squiddy. I swore I would never do it. Hi, Phil. How do you like me now, buddy? Hey, you still got to send me your address. I've got some special treats for you to send you for Christmas. You know, we're all going to be trapped inside our houses, uh, probably not being able to see a lot of family and friends. And as long as UPS and the Postal Service and DHL and FedEx keep working, uh, which I imagine they will be, we still will be able to share gifts. And I encourage you if to make a tobacco friend. Now, if you're a grown-up, I don't know about the legality of sending nasal snuff or chew like this through the mail. I believe the Prevent Access to Cigarettes by Teenagers Act also covers smokeless tobacco, but it doesn't cover cigars or pipe tobacco, which I find rather strange. Uh, Junior can't buy smokes through the mail, but he can buy blunt wrappers, wrappers to roll up big reefer blunts. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But maybe we can still exchange. I think if there, if you can get assurance at the post office that it's an adult receiving it, and if you're not a company, I think it might be okay, but I'm not a lawyer, and you might want to consult your local postmaster, because he or she will certainly know. Yeah, you know what? I really like the flavor of this. If I didn't have to spit, this would be kind of cool. I'm liking the nicotine I'm getting from this. I do not like the lip diarrhea. And I'm very glad that I don't have as big a wad of it in my mouth as I did the night that that young lady visited the radio station. Um, yeah, and I gotta, if I'm going to keep doing this, I'm going to have to get a proper mud jug of some kind. Although I hate the idea of even having one. Because that would mean I'm, I'm committing to chewing. Now, I still won't dip. For the same reason, I won't use loose snooze. And that is, I just get mud mouth. I get, if I try to do Copenhagen, even the long cut, um, it goes all over my face. I mean, I get it all over my mouth. And I get a, a, a very dirty mouth, very dirty teeth from it. And um, probably not a good idea. But this I can handle, except for the spitting. And I'm not a very elegant spitter, in case you didn't notice. Except for that one night, we called it surprise night at summer camp, when you had to spit. But that's another story, and we're not going to go into that right now. From the dank basement, still with a wad of the Stoker's Classic in my face. A small wad, mind you, but a wad. Well, it's good that y'all came by here, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And y'all take good care. Uh, remember now, you know, if your family tree doesn't branch, you might be a redneck. I stole that. That's not original. You know, uh, but, uh, you know, listen, if you're out there in cousin bumping country, uh, just don't do it. You don't want to have wall-eyed kids like I am. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. I played, oh, by the way, you should know. God damn it. I played in country bands as much as I played in rock and blues and jazz and uh, funk bands, black music bands. I uh, actually made a lot more money playing country uh, as a country piano picker 
So I'm no stranger to people that like to chew and don't mind spitting. From the dank basement, y'all come back now, here. Yeah?